Today I want to tell you a story about this word from Bleach. It's called Sode no Shirayuki and it is a rookie as Kuchiki Zanpakuto. It became tough experience for me. I even got the hardest injury in my life because of this. But let me tell you everything from the beginning. Sode is actually third sword that I'm crafting in my career. First thing is a pattern. I'm making my patterns in Photoshop. I'm taking the best reference of the sword that I can find and I'm circling it in Photoshop. Then I split the line into sheets and printing it. Because Shirayuki is pretty thin, I glued pattern onto the cardboard so it could be easier to use. Then I'm carving multiple layers of swords from PVC. It is plastic that is used for billboards. For Shirayuki I used 4 layers, and because I didn't have a sheet of plastic with a needed light, I did it mosaic style with separate pieces. Since it's all will be glued together, it is okay to do so as long as your separate pieces will be cut with different light and in different places. For blade I took the same pattern and cut a mini pattern for blade Bivel, since Sode no Shirayuki has pretty wide one. Then I marked it right on the base and carved everything with stationary knife for an eternity. <laughs> this is pretty harsh but at the same time satisfying process. When you cut off everything an accessory and bring the shape to perfection, your craft slowly starts to look closely to your image and it gives you happiness and motivation to work more. Even though at the end you are covered with plastic shavings and your hands hurt and you probably cut yourself multiple times, but anyway… <laughs> A sandpaper goes after the knife, and this is actually the worst part of everything. I don't have any positive points in this activity. Dust after sanding the plastic is very toxic, so I suggest you strongly to do it somewhere outside of living places and wear masks and even glasses to protect yourself. Plastic is pretty easy to sand though, it's kinda soft and levels fast, and it can become very hot if you will work with high speed. <laughs> Be careful. At this point I realized that my sword becoming way too soft and flexible, so I decided to insert the metal pin between the layers. For this I needed to cut those layers that I glued at the first step. And this is how I cut my finger. During this craft I got the biggest injury in my life. Because I broke every possible safety rule, I stabbed myself with statuary knife in thumb on left hand. You can see on the footage my cut nail and how deep the blade went in my finger. It was really very hurtful. I lost a lot of blood and even ended up in the emergency room. But I learned my lessons after this and right now everything is fine. For some reasons I decided to make sheath for this sword, even though canonically Shode no Shurayuki doesn't have one. But I was really curious to make it, and I even created my own technique for making it. Well, maybe it already exists, but never mind. I really wanted to try this out. So I took multiple cardboard flat rings, exact same size as sword's blade, then I placed them on it at the same distance from each other, glued some thick office paper sheets on it, wrapped it around the blade, and this is how I got the base of my sheath. I know this technique looks not as professional at all, <laughs> but it's such an affordable and easy way to make it. Instead of pepper, you can use foam or experiment with different parts of it. But because I am a pepper mache fanatic, <laughs> I decided to make everything out of paper. I wrapped paper base with masking tape because it's pretty soft and at the same time it's waterproof, so it can protect paper base out of losing its shape. And then I wanted to cover it with multiple layers of paper mache And this is how I left this project for almost a year. 
After I returned to Sodino Shirayuki, first of all I started to fix masking tape on sheath a little and then proceed to the first layer of paper mache. The tip of the sheath is should be the strongest part, at the same time it's the most fragile place, so I extra glued it multiple times and covered it with paper mache very well. Then, slowly but carefully, I placed the first layer of paper mache. I really enjoy this technique. I made many different cosplay pieces out of this. My garnet's rod, for example. You just putting the layer of glue on the surface, then the layer of paper, then the layer of glue again, and so on and on multiple times. I don't really remember how many layers of glue I used for the sheets. Probably six. Since this thing doesn't have a harsh base, it is okay to use multiple layers. Final thing that I'm doing is covering layer with extra PVA glue coat for smoothing. And after every two layers, I'm sanding everything with two types of sandpaper. A little bigger and a little smaller. That gives you extra slick surface. I can say that it's not the best way to make sheath because it's really very hard to make perfect ideal shape with paper mache. But it is so easy to use and comfortable to work with for me. I'm glad that I tried this idea and my experiment is actually succeed. I worked on my sheath and then when I returned to squirt I realized that I'm not happy with its shape. <laughs> so I took tinier knife some extra sandpaper and started to cut everything a little bit more. It's actually very useful to distract from different parts of the process to some other details and then come back to it with fresh eye. You may find some imperfections that disturb you and you will be able to fix them. It's easier to do during the process than when project is already finished. For guard, I decided to draft a pattern by myself on the checkered sheet. It's turned out to be much easier than to draw it in Photoshop. You can see all the millimeters and measures there. And I tried it just on the sword before cutting it out of plastic to make sure that all proportions are okay and it looks good. Then I started to carve it out of plastic and I hate this part so much to be honest. <laughs> it's even harder to cut guard than to cut an entire sword blade part because all of those tiny details. I did two layers of guard and then glued them together. And I glued a couple of layers onto sword handle as well so it will be a little thicker. And when everything dried, the harsh and exhausting process of sanding began. It's as tough as cutting, maybe even worse. <laughs> because right now you need to bring everything to perfection. And it may start to feel and look as something abnormally hard and long to do. But please don't give up and you will achieve everything. Just keep on working. I cut some extra layers for sword handle as well, the same way I did the blade part. And this time I was unhappy with its shape again, so I again marked its straight line on the blade and then cut it a little bit sharper. Now it started to look good enough for me and I sanded everything and finished it. Now I need to level all my craft pieces with putty and acrylic glue. I covered the entire sheath with it cause it made out of paper mache and paper mache needed it really very badly. <laughs> but plastic has pretty smooth surface itself so I only place it putty on places where I cut something. It must dry for a day, then I sanded it and then I painted it. Everything painted with acrylic primer. My beloved, adored acrylic primer. I love it so, so much. Even though the primer was already white enough, <laughs> I needed to paint everything with white paint, not only for color, but for making surface of the sword smoother and harder. I asked my friend to make it on his country house and he helped me with painting job. <laughs> It's important to spray paint carefully and slowly so it will cover everything good but still didn't have drops and smudges. And next day after the paint dried we covered everything with matte liqueur. 
Master class! Yo, 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 yo! <laughs> the board I painted at home by myself with brush and simple paint. I bought my tsukamaki at local sewing shop and I couldn't find the needed white shade so I decided to bleach it by myself. <laughs> Did you get it? Bleach it! Okay, okay. I used simple whitening gel, washed my flat coordinate, then washed it again and ironed everything. It worked really very good. Then I abandoned this project for almost a year. <laughs> Even though there were such a tiny amount of details to finish left, I still was not inspired to work on them. But maybe I'm even glad that I finished this just now. Tsukamaki is not so tricky thing to make for your katana type swords, but it still took me four attempts to make it. I did it by this tutorial. Basically, you need to just turn it up and up twice and then place the second part right on top of previous. Turn it, it up to twice. I really enjoyed making it, but because I painted everything with smooth paint, the core just slides off from it after the photoshoot. So I suggest you to glue it after wrapping for extra support. After it I started to work on foam details, there is some extra pieces in the design of the sword which I made out of 3mm EVA foam. Pattern for it I did with just simple foil and scotch. Cut, bend, place it everything on and then just seal the seams with sealant. Some extra foam pieces for details and in the end I just covered everything with same acrylic primer and white acrylic paint. So the Noshira Yuki has beautiful long long white ribbon on it. And for this I took some furniture. I couldn't find enough ribbon stoppers so for a top I just used three short stoppers which I cut later. And at the end of the ribbon I used white but not white enough stopper. But it still looked good. For ribbon I took two simple white atlas one and glued them together with glue web. The ribbon became tough and moved more beautifully on the sword after this. And for decoration I used big pearls and crystal. I know it's not canonical a little bit, but it looked so beautiful and crystal suit Sode no Shirayuki very good, in my opinion. Even though I wanted to craft Sode no Shirayuki, I didn't want it to actually cosplay it owner, <laughs> Rukia Kuchiki. I don't hate her, just didn't want it to waste my time and resources on it. So I just took everything similar to Shinigami look. I took my garnet short wig and went with my photographer to the wood so I could film proper footages for this wood and maybe make some pics. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm finally finished that project. 